This is a review of the Goldring 1042. And it's not a new cartridge. And it's fairly old, actually. So why am I even looking at it? Well, don't forget, Hi-Fi is just a bunch of tools to do a job. The idea of a Hi-Fi is to give you the best possible sound. It's to enhance that musical truth. It's a tool, a bunch of tools, all connected together. That's all a Hi-Fi is. It doesn't necessarily mean that only new tools can do the job. Sometimes older tools, like this gold ring, are ideal, are perfect for the job. And in fact, for the job I'm going to be talking about, it is perfect. I get questions all the time about a particular issue, a particular set of circumstances, and this set of circumstances crops up again and again and again. And the issue is this. Imagine, let's say you have a turntable, and let's say that turntable has a budget cartridge on it. Something in the region of £50, £200, something like that. Something built by Audio-Technica or Autofon or Gold Ring or something, something of that nature. And let's say that you've got yourself an external phono amplifier by now. Something maybe from Project, £50, maybe a Riga for around £90. So that, that's the sort of kit you're talking about. And you want to upgrade your cartridge because you think it will enhance the sound quality. Now upgrading from this 50 to 100 pound cartridge upwards can be a very nervous time. It can be a little bit stressful because what do you do? How far do you upgrade? And what technology do you upgrade to? The popular advice is to go moving coil and many people will say right Get yourself a low-cost moving coil, something around £250. I wouldn't advise that. If you are going to go moving coil, if you have got a, a budget turntable with a moving magnet type of cartridge and you think to yourself, I want to go moving coil, I wouldn't spend £250 because I'd be looking at a more significant leap in sonic performance. Going to a £250 moving coil from a moving magnet budget will improve matters, but the increase is more like baby steps. I would encourage you to go further for your first moving coil upgrade. So I'd be looking more around the 400 pounds level, and I'd be looking at cartridge, something like a HANA cartridge, the E-series, which is around that 400 pound mark. That would give you a, a more notable uh, sonic upgrade. There'd be a a bigger leap. It would The upgrade also would last longer. If you're doing baby steps, you feel as though you want to upgrade more frequently. It's going to cost you more too. The more upgrades you do, the more money you're spending. So I don't necessarily agree with that. I, I, I want you to spend less overall, but take larger, larger upgrade steps. So you'll, you'll see more benefits. You'll see more from your upgrade. You see? So £250 moving coils are fine, if you're fresh into hi-fi and you, that's your first buy. If you haven't got a turntable and you're buying a turntable and you want to go straight into moving coil, then fine. Go for that £250 moving coil as your first cartridge, say. But not as an upgrade. So what's the issue? Well, it's that leap. If you've got yourself, say, a £35 Audio Technica cartridge, an elliptical cartridge like a an 1895e. If you're going from £35 all the way up to £400 moving coil, that's a bit of a leap in terms of cost. That's quite a lot of money. But there's a hidden, there's a hidden expense here. Because if you've got a moving magnet, chances are your phono amplifier will be moving magnet only. So if you're upgrading your cartridge to moving coil, you've got to also upgrade your phono amplifier to support moving coil. Otherwise, it ain't going to work. You will need both. So now you're spending, say, £400 on your moving coil cartridge. But then you're spending, I don't know, another four, £500 on a phono amplifier to support moving coil cartridges. And that's another thing. Because even if you have a phono amplifier, say, worth, I don't know, £100, £150, and it says on the box, support moving coil. That doesn't necessarily mean it's going to sound great when you attach your 
for the sake of argument, your HANA moving coil to it. You're going to have to have a moving coil of a similar quality. There's no point in having something cheap and cheerful. If you're going to get yourself a £400 moving coil cartridge, you really want something to support it properly of a similar price point. So now you're spending eight, nine hundred pounds total for the cartridge and the moving coil. That's a lot of cash. That's a heap of cash. So you've got <laughs> you've gone from a little 1895e Audio Technica, 35 quid, to 900 quid's worth of, of equipment in one go. It's a bit of a shock to the wallet or the purse, don't you think? So I would recommend doing this. I would get an interim cartridge, okay? Get yourself, and we'll talk about, well, you know what that's going to be, don't you? But I would get yourself an interim cartridge first, okay? Later, buy a good quality phono amp of four, five hundred pounds, something like a Tricord Dino, which is very nice. And then get yourself a moving coil cartridge. So this is where the gold ring comes in, because this is how I think you should do it. I think you should stay moving magnet, but just get yourself a better moving magnet cartridge. And the gold ring, the 1042, is an ideal solution to do this. It's going to cost you about two, 240, I think it's 242 generally. You won't have to change your phono amp. Everything else can stay the same. You just add the cartridge and you will hear a sonic benefit. Now the 1042 arrives with a pretty advanced stylus. It's called a line contact stylus. Specifically, it's called a Geiger S. And basically, it will hug the groove in a lot more efficient fashion than an elliptical stylus will. It's a step up in terms of stylus profile. And if you remember the cartridge, it has that cantilever coming out, and on the end of the cantilever is, that, is the actual stylus, the diamond tip. The cantilever is important. It's critical when designing a cartridge. The cantilever on a gold ring 1042 is made of aluminium, which is nothing special, but the aluminium itself, the actual cantilever itself, is thinner and smaller in size and it's also lighter. But the actual cantilever is more responsive in the groove and so you're looking at more detail just through that little design enhancement on its own. The chassis itself is called POCAN, P-O-C-A-N. It's a sort of glass reinforced uh, polyester. The stylus can actually be removed. So once your stylus wears out, you don't have to buy a new cartridge. So again, it's great value because you can just replace the actual stylus on its own. My initial tests, I compared the 1042 with a couple of uh, low-cost elliptical cartridges. There was an Autofon 2M, which is priced around £90, and a Goldring E3, which is a very nice elliptical cartridge. And I played some rock and I play some jazz. And the Goldring 1042 blew them away. It was a night and day performance. For example, on the jazz track, there was uh, one little section where um, there was castanets played. On the cheaper uh, ellipticals, those castanets were, were fine, but very clicky, as castanets are, of course. But with the 1042, there was a woody element. I mean, they sounded like they were made out of wood. It sounded like there, were, there was the clicking of wood. There was a little bit more of that sort of wood tone about the gold ring, which was lovely. Whenever there was a reverb around uh, voices or drums or, or even guitars, again, that sounded a little bit more natural. It sounded a little bit more extended, which was uh, a result of lower noise. Speaking of noise, you will hear a touch more groove noise, but that's because more of the actual stylus is in contact with more of the groove. So you're going to hear a little bit more of that contact with just a slight increase in groove noise, but it's not an issue, it's not a problem, and it never gets in the way. And I could only really hear it when I was doing an A-B comparison with these other cheaper elliptical cartridges. So you can't, it's not really a problem. Dynamic reach on the gold ring was much superior as well. When I say dynamic reach, I mean when you get to uh, the bass, the bass goes deeper, uh, the mid-range and the treble goes higher, so you, you can you can hear there's 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 less restriction in those extremes. So what I mean by that again is the cheaper elliptical cartridges, the brass section in the jazz sounded a bit weedier, a bit thinner than the gold ring, which had a more fuller, more organic sound. So that was the test with the cheaper ellipticals. 
I then went in the other direction and I picked up a relatively low cost moving coil. In my particular case, I found one from Benz, as in Mercedes Benz, that's how it's spelled, B-E-N-Z, a Swiss company. This particular one is called the MC Gold and I think it's £325. Now I didn't expect the uh, gold ring to win this particular fight and it didn't. The moving coil offered superior detail, it offered superior imagery like where all the instruments were placed on the soundstage and it offered a better sense of a sort of 3D effect. So fight over, the moving coil wins, yeah? Well it's not as simple as that. Because while the moving coil was better, it wasn't better by an enormous amount. The gold ring really held its own in just about every area of sound. So there was great insight around the mid-range. Treble was delicate and fragile. Bass was solid and full of impact. The 1042 had really nothing to be ashamed of at all. In fact, and the difference, as I say, was closer than you might think. So as an upgrade, the gold ring 1042 is a great choice. It does the job. It fills that gap from the cheap ellipticals, it fills that gap to the more expensive moving coils. It's an ideal stepping stone, the 1042. So what I would recommend is this. I would recommend if you have a budget turntable and you have a cartridge which is 50 to 100 pounds, get yourself a gold ring 1042, get that in, enjoy that, and then when you want to do another upgrade, upgrade the phono amp from that 50, 90 pound phono amp that you already have. Get yourself a top quality phono amp around four, 500 pounds, something like a Tricord Dino, for example. That will increase the, the uh, that will enhance rather the sound quality of the gold ring even further. The gold ring will love that. It will, you'll notice a, a, an increase in capacity, increase in, in, in sonic performance. So you've got your high quality phono amp and you've got your gold ring. And then later still, when you're ready, get yourself into the moving coil world. Grab a HANA E-Series moving coil or even something better. And then away you go. That to me is a more logical path doing it that way around. It's also kinder on your bank balance. And it gives you a better sense of sonic improvement as you're going through that upgrade path. That's how I would do it. So the gold ring might not be the new kid on the block but it serves a great purpose. It's a superb hi-fi tool. It enhances the sound quality. So it's a serious moving magnet cartridge. It's a serious design, and I highly recommend it. And that's all from me for this video. Hopefully I'll see you on the next video. Come and join me, and until then, bye bye bye.